Welcome everybody back to another episode of Steen uh, versus the Machine. Of course, I'm your host with the most true the Steen Machine Steen. And as always, I'm joined by the lead handicapper over at winnersandwiners.com, Scott the Steen Roller. Steen, Scott, how are you doing? Good, sir. How are you? Happy Friday. Happy Friday, indeed. Uh, did you get your open enrollment done? Open enrollment for what? I, health insurance. It's a it's open enrollment period. I don't you know. I don't know. Uh, and on the government dole, dude. Well, but I figured you still had to do it at the same time. I didn't know. You know, uh, I, I don't know how health insurance works. Um, Outside of company stuff, I guess. No, we have it through your mom's company. Oh, well, I assume it's open enrollment. I don't know. I mean, but it's open enrollment for my company. I don't know. I, sorry, I'm trying to make conversation. <laughs> Um, you know what? It's one of those things. I'm on a need to know basis. If it's open enrollment, I'm sure she handled it and what's good. So yeah. No Fair worries. enough. Fair enough. Other than that terrible opening, how is your Friday going so far, Scott? You can tell that we certainly rehearsed these. Yeah, I, I I had that written out. Scott has confusion about me asking about open enrollment. I ask open enrollment. Yeah, I had yeah, we're following the script so far. Uh Keep digging. Keep digging, buddy. Let's see. I've got us penciled in to go uh, one and four each this week, I think. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Sounds about right. Yeah, it sure feels about uh, right. Uh, my Friday's going good. We're uh, at our college show earlier today where we uh, get together and each pick three college games. So uh, shifting gears, looking at the NFL. Kind of disappointed they're not playing in Buffalo, but, you know, I get it. It's... Uh, <laughs> A little hard to do anything in Buffalo right now. So. Yeah, I get it, but I'm still I'm still allowed to be mad about it, right? Like, it seems I to be know. the general consensus. You know, people people understand that you can't you can't get stadium personnel there. You can't get snowplow drivers. You can't get anybody to clear the seats. Um, you know, let alone run the concession stands and ticket takers and all the apparatus that goes with it. I don't think those people can get to work. Yeah. So. Plus, I don't know how the Browns would have flown in. I think that was the concern that I was seeing mostly, was the concern really wasn't even about, like, people are like, oh, you, they just don't want to play in the snow. No, that's not the issue. The issue was they were worried about how teams were going to get in, and they were worried about the Bills getting out and how that would uh, cause problems to the Thanksgiving Day game. Because that's the game they truly don't want to move or miss, is the Thanksgiving Day game. Right. And so that's where a lot of the concern is, and that's why they ended up actually delaying it. From what I understood going into when I was reading stuff about whether or not they would, they said if they do, it's because they're worried about how people are going to get into or out of Buffalo. It's not even really about the playing conditions themselves. It's mostly about the travel after or before. Well, and they still got to get the, the bills are going to leave on Saturday. Uh, they usually leave at 1 o'clock. They're talking about bumping that back a little bit. Uh, I guess it's supposed to stop snowing sometime Saturday morning. So, hmm. I don't know. It should be fine. Uh, I'm not touching it. We'll see if you've got it, but I'm not uh, I'm not getting that. Um, did the well on the does what the machine does. That's all I got for you. Did well on the Titans last night, so we got our week off to a good start. And nice. Uh, I have... Titans went straight up at plus 152. So, nice. Yeah. I also had the Titans to win straight up. You got a plus 152. I had plus 118. What the hell? Uh, what time was that? I don't... I, you know, that feels wrong looking at it now. I, there's no way, right? Yeah, right? If they were minus... They were plus three underdogs, right? Yeah. No way that's plus, plus 118, right? Nope. No way at all. Hmm. Hmm. Weird. Well, hey, Weird, that's, a, right? that's a bigger win on my sheet than I uh, thought I had. But uh, no, a certified pick last night was the under, and that did not hit, did not cash. Up the under in that game too. That was uh, we did a consensus pick for the three top experts at Winners and Winers, of which I was one, and we all loved the under in that uh, in that contest. So yeah, uh, I just uh, yep, it happens. It happens. Needed no score before halftime. They stoned them on that first time they went down there, and I was like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I was like, that's exactly what I needed. And then they fucking... I didn't, I didn't even see what happened. Because I turned... With four minutes left, Titans got stoned. I'm like, 
Well, it took them, I don't know, 11 minutes to get down there. So I assumed they're not going to make it back down. And then I assumed Green Bay was going to, I don't know, get a first down and punt it a reasonable distance. Yeah, they, and so, and they ran like no time off the clock. Yeah, Jesus, yes. Let me down. Green Bay led me down all over the place. Uh, well, I guess just there. Just I did have the Titans yeah. money line, so I don't know. I'm disappointed in you, buddy, that you're turning into a, you're turning into your parents. You, you're, uh, you're supposed to go play bingo tonight, and instead you're shopping for a holiday that is still six days away. I listen. Uh, not my pick. Not my pick to go do. I wanted. I wanted to do the bingo. Uh, she has great concern about when the time is uh, when the when the f- about getting all the shopping done well we're booked the not rest now when. we're if booked not now when truman we're booked a lot the rest of the weekend is the problem is we've got uh grub bud's 100th episode tomorrow morning we're uh filming it it's you know uh, we're eating the entire menu of it looks like the taco brawl breakfast on- menu so <laughs> They've, they've simplified it, haven't they? Haven't they like taken a bunch of stuff off of there? Yeah, it's really not a ton of stuff. I was, I was like, out of we put it up there because it's really on brand for us to do Taco Bell. But there's not a ton of stuff on there where I'm like, okay, it's like kind of, kind of picking the lamest option, but it's fine. Uh, I voted for Artie. Good. I wanted to see. That's that'd be my pick. Yeah, I wanted to see the. Uh, I wanted to see the Hardy's breakfast. The Hardy's they breakfast are. is so breakfast. good. A lot, of, a lot of biscuits involved there. Oh and stuff. yeah. Oh, I'd feel awful after eating a Hardee's breakfast. Yeah, absolutely. No question about it. No yes. question about it. So we've got that going. We've got a Friendsgiving you're after all that. Eat, you're all going to eat everything, or how's that going to work? Yeah, we're all going to have just about a bite of everything, probably. Okay. We're all going to split. Just, we're going to try not to waste any food here, obviously. But Whatever that's... whatever the sommelier equivalent of Taco Bell is, that's what you guys are doing. Are you yes. spitting it into a bucket? You're taking a bite and swishing it around your mouth? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, there goes a, there goes a sausage quesadilla. 70, 73. Yeah, no. Uh, we're doing that. And then I got a Friendsgiving Saturday night. I got a Friendsgiving Sunday afternoon. I got Chiefs game Sunday night. I mean, I get it. I, I, I get where the time, the walls are closing in a bit, I guess. So. Well, fair enough. Well, and in, 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 in fairness, if it came to you or Tina keeping your plans on track, I, I trust her a lot more. So if she says you guys need to shop six days in advance... Although Bingo's over like at nine o'clock, that's a, that's the a thing. But we got to go to Aldi. We got to go to Costco. That's it. If, oh. if Costco, if Costco and Aldi closed it, I think ten. I bet I could have pushed it. I bet we could have. Are you going to eat like the Cinnabon delights and everything? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I wish so they looking... still. As I, I assume you have the menu up, but when they yeah. first started the breakfast, they had a fruity pebbles delight also. Damn right they did, and they're good. They were good, yeah, absolutely. Uh, because the Cinnabon delights are still awesome. They're still absolutely. fantastic, fan freaking fantastic. But it's 100%. it's a fat guy dream. Uh, I love the crunch wrap that's got the hash brown in it. So good, so bad for you. I re- and when they first came out, again another thing that's gotten worse because when they first came out, they had like five crunch wraps, and they were all awesome. There was like a Baja California one. There was like a country breakfast one that was just gravy. Is this coming out of the Grub Buds General Fund? Uh, I think it's coming out of my fund personally on Ooh. this one. This is a pretty substantial breakfast order, there, bud. I uh, yeah. What are you thirty five, forty bucks probably? Uh, you know that's about how much a Grub Buds episode costs. Hey, which is a good point to uh to tell everybody if you're watching this on YouTube. Hey, head over on to patreon.com slash patreon.com slash open disaster. You want to help fund. Uh, you know, us, you know, you get to see Steam vs. Machine a week early, you get the Grub Buds, uh, you can help fund us there, help pay for some of our hut all menu breakfast that we've got going on over there. Do you have to go to Aldi tonight? I am going to Aldi tonight, yes. Okay, well then we need to grip it and rip it here, bud. Sorry, it's just, uh... Closes at 8. Two hours. Or 8. 8.30 or 8? 8. Yeah, 8. Costco's 8.30. I got time. I'm just saying. I got time. Uh, but we need to grip it and rip it. You are right. Scott. What time are you doing that tomorrow? Doing 10 a.m. 10 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> got it. Oh, I, I was going to feel bad. Like, I should have been, I, you should have invited me for your 100th episode. And not because I'm anything special, but because I really fucking love Taco Bell breakfast. Hey. So. Hey, you want to, hey, uh, you want to wait? No, I got I to gotta, I gotta do radio at 1030. Oh, uh, damn it. 
You could you could film me doing radio in the middle of the Grub Buds spot. But, uh. <laughs> that would be that'd be very on brand for Grub Buds. We're certainly not a uh, the, the the internet term is scuffed. It's a scuffed thing that we do over there on Grub Buds sometimes. The hell does that mean? Uh, man, I don't I don't even know how to describe it to you. Scuffed is what we call it. All right, like this intro so far has been sc- scuffed. <laughs> no, just okay. Kidding. All right, it just means it sucks. Is that the deal? Uh. <laughs> It's it's different than sucks. It's uh, things start it's things start to mess up or like it's gets a little fluky or you're a little bit worried about how it's going. Yeah, it's scuffed. I think. Okay. Well, all right. Let's get to it. All right. All that being said, Scott, last week, uh, two and three, you went. You had uh, you had the New Orleans pit under. Wait. That no, that one cashed. The New Orleans pit under cashed. Yeah. Sorry, Bears minus just- two. Bears minus two and a half. Man, it felt like they had that game won about three times. <laughs> how ridiculous was that? Jesus Christ. I. It's weird to me how everybody is in love with Justin Fields right now, and they can't seem uh, to win a game. I don't know. Yeah, he's put up these incredible numbers, and I think they're like one and five or whatever. So right. Got, I got him again this week, so I'm pretty excited about that. Where he's like, oh, he's the FedEx ground player of the week. I was like, okay. Weird. Yeah. Um. Yep. You did have the Denver Tennessee under that cashed, right? God damn, that's just like printing money. Yeah, Denver under, last in scoring, first in defense. Come on, what are we doing here, guys? Yeah, historically like, bad offense, historically good defense. Not even like the that. Iowa Minnesota game this week is thirty-two and a half. That's the way I, I feel like every Denver game should be thirty-two and a half. Right. Yeah. If Denver fans wanted to be more mad about the Russ signing, I remember seeing a stat that said if they scored seventeen points a game, they would be eight and one. <laughs> Or something ridiculous. 18. 18 points. 18 points, they'd be 8-1. 18 yeah. points. Going into last week, they'd have been 8-1. So, if you could be yeah. a normal NFL offense to get to 20 points, you'd be cruising right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Be the one seed in the AFC. That's hilarious to me. Uh, perfect Denver Broncos encapsulation right there. Uh, you also had the Indianapolis Colts, the Las Vegas Raiders. He had that under. What a stupid game that was, huh? Ridiculous. That's a stupid way to lose that under. And, man, I've got a stupid under that I lost also. You also have the Cowboys minus four. Ooh, your issue is betting on Mike McCarthy in Green Bay. We, we You forget because you think, well, you know, I never bet on him when he was in Green Bay. But you forget that it counts when he goes back to Green Bay that you also shouldn't be betting on Mike McCarthy. First time in the 60-plus year history of the uh, of the Dallas Cowboys they have lost a game and entering the fourth quarter with a lead of 14 points or more. I saw that. I saw that You're stat. Welcome. You're welcome, Dallas. I saw they're like 194 and 0 or something ridiculous. Yeah. Just let me jump on that shit. I'll I'll bring it to a screeching <laughs> fucking halt. Yeah. Yep. Well, so yeah, t- that's how you got two and three. Two and three. Not you know. Again, you just you, you were like I was early. You just need a you need a couple positive weeks. You need to string together. You're so close. You just keep on ending up two and three. Uh, I was again. I've been able to string together a couple positive weeks. Positive week for the machine. Positive week for me on this show. I went three and two. I uh, I sadly had the Jacksonville Kansas City over. Man, that I just felt weird. I what an odd game. Chiefs turned the ball over three times and just and lose an onside kick, and they turn it over to an offense that just cannot capitalize on anything. So Jacksonville Kansas City over. Did not hit. I did add the Houston uh, Giants under 41 and a half. Talk about something where everything went right. I'll tell you what. Uh, I guess I can't really complain about the other unders. Uh, uh, other bets not cashing when I cashed on that Houston under. Man, another game where I felt like I had the under one a couple times. And then I finally hit it there at the end. Just barely. As they scored 40 and I had 41 and a half. Uh, Cleveland, Miami. Oh, yeah. Cleveland, Miami, I had the over in that one. Uh, Miami, thankfully, did not take their foot off the gas. I was in very much dire straits when it was 30-17, to 17, and I was like, well, shit. And then they scored another one just because. Or it's 32-17, sorry. And they scored another one just in case. I appreciate them for that. I appreciate Mike McDaniel for doing that for me. Big Damn shout decent. out. Uh, I, too, printed money with the Denver, Tennessee, under 39. And... I lost my final bet. I had Arizona, Los Angeles Rams under 40 and a half. Of course, the Rams 
Thankfully, they rallied. They came, marched right down the field. 12 seconds left. Touchdown to cut the lead to 10 points for nothing. For, uh, you. They like, <laughs> they ran hurry up offense to score. The shot, I oh, got just fucking laid out, roll over. What's the difference between 17 and 10 other than fucking <laughs> McVay cashing on the over? Son of a, I just, ugh. Two backup Total quarterbacks. Bit. That bet just got so much better throughout the week. I fucking... God, I score for no reason. It's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. Two and three. Two and three still, you know, can't complain. Can't complain about two and three or you'll go three and... Or you'll... Or can't complain about three and two or you'll go two and three, right? So... The way that works. So you went two and three, Scott. You're at minus 127 for the week. Brings you to 20 and 30, negative uh, 1251. Again, a couple... You've got time. We've got time to string together some weeks. 40%. That's just unacceptable right there. Yeah. Got got to go. Got to go. Uh, I've got... Uh, I went 3-2. I was plus 80. Again, just chipping away at that that hole. I d- dug myself early in the year. Uh, I dig myself back out to 23, 26-1. Negative 497. I'm five units away. I am back to only being one week away from taking this thing positive. So Okay. I'm uh, a positive thinking right there. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm five picks away, right? Easy, right. easy, easy. Uh, so Scott, let's keep it rolling. Get into the get into our picks of this week again. I guess winners make it, take it. I finally remembered the words, which means I will not remember the name of your show later on. Uh, <laughs> my first pick of the day, I had the. Is this right? I feel like I I feel like this went out of order. Hold on, let me make sure. I well, either way, it's fine. I had the I had the New York Jets and the New and the New York, New England Patriots under thirty eight and a half. Scott, just two terrible offenses, two terrible offenses that I do not believe in. Uh, a bottom half offense and a bottom in the in the New York in the New England Patriots and a uh, a bottom again just about a uh, a bottom ten offense in the New York Jets. I don't like either of them, but you know what I do love. Their defenses. A top three defense in the New England Patriots and a top six defense by my metrics. All by Steen, the Steen system metrics, of course. Uh, again, two top six defenses against two bottom half offenses. I love this under here, Scott. Give me the New York Jets, New England Patriots under 38 and a half at minus 105. Well, game flow should certainly be in your favor. Neither one of these teams likes to... Uh, well, I don't know if they like to throw the ball or not, but they're not very good at it. So, uh, nope. they uh, pass... Jets have thrown for more than 200 yards just once in their last seven games. Uh, the Jets have done it just once in their last five, and that was against New England when they fell behind and uh, pretty much stopped trying to run the ball. Uh, neither of them goes particularly fast. J- Jets a little bit below average at 16th in pace, New England at 24th. I don't hate that. I took that on the show this week, so obviously I'm uh, I'm I'm a big, big fan, fan of the under. Would you? I got I had 38 and a half. Would you get it at 38 and a half? That's what's still at right now. Uh, okay, good. All right. Well, Truman, I'm going to stick with the unders here and play uh, my first first half play of the season. I'm going to play Panthers Ravens under 21. Not really worried about the Panthers here. I'm worried about their defense, but uh, I don't. I think Baltimore's going to have to do all the heavy lifting here. Uh, Carolina averages just 6.6 first half points in their last seven. Overall, they are third from the bottom in first half points. In Baltimore. Whatever you want to say about their defense, they're really good in the first half. They're third in the league, giving up just 8.1 points per game in the first half of their contest. I think this one stays under the total of 21 for the first half, at least. I got to agree with you there. I I just can't believe they keep on sticking with P.J. Walker. I don't, I don't get uh, it. I think, I, think, I think Mayfield's going to play. Is it Mayfield? I think it's going to be okay. Mayfield. Wasn't it? Was it? No, was Mayfield left. No, no, it was Mayfield. No, it was PJ Walker on Thursday night, and they won. There's no way it's Mayfield this week. Uh, okay. All right. Well, we'll see. He's uh, he's healthy, and he's uh, oh, PJ Walker's out, dude. Oh, is he? He is. Um, he has a, a high ankle sprain, and he is oot for this game. So it will be Baker Mayfield. Oh, I see it now. There, yeah, there it is. Panthers start Mayfield that quarterback with walker hurt well i like it even more i think i you know they're both terrible quarterbacks the, 
I, you know, I, I think the Panthers can really, they really are shooting fish in a barrel looking for bad quarterbacks on that staff. You've got P.J. Oh. Walker, Baker Mayfield, and Sam Darnold. Don't forget Sam Darnold still over there. and they, he, He's not even good enough to play over either of those two. He's, he's, just, he's just gotten healthy. He's only been right. healthy for the last couple of weeks. So. Yeah. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Still, so. May, still Mayfield today. It's uh, over Darnold. Yep. Cannot be a good trust of uh, or good barometer of how good Darnold is. So, great. But I'm with you there great. for the under 21. Uh, moves me on. Moving on to my second pick. <laughs> it was weird. All right, I don't know what my uh, did that, but my sheet <laughs> gave me the second pick over the. Now, now I'm back to my first pick. Uh, give me the Washington Commanders, Houston Texans under 41. Uh, Scott, again, two terrible offenses. Uh, it's a little better for Washington with Heineke, but I still have them as a bottom ten as a bottom ten offense, and I have the Houston Texans also as a bottom five offense. Two bottom five offenses. The defenses are also not good. They're also not great, but these offenses are just terrible. Two bottom ten offenses. I like that enough for me to have the under forty one. I wish it was forty two. Just you know. From a six touchdowns perspective, but I still, even with, uh, I don't even know if you can call it an offensive explosion. They just beat the hell. They just uh, punched the Eagles right in the teeth and beat them last week. Even with that uh, kind of uh, momentum going, momentum I've heard from a friend is not real. So real, <laughs> real. I'll still t- you just have it till you don't, right? Uh, I still have the c- Commanders Houston under forty one. All right. Very good. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of this Washington team since uh, Heineke uh, got the uh, nod. And they've uh, been able to go 3-1 and one in his four starts. Offense has been a, uh, a little bit better as they put up uh, a 22 and 22.2 points per game um, with Heineke. So they are uh, bringing that average up a little bit. And this is one of the beefs. I have with your system, and, and there's nothing you can do about it, but it, you're basically looking at two different Washington teams. Sure. The Washington team of Carson Wentz and the Washington team of Taylor Heineke. So that's it, it is a – I don't know how you adjust for that. It takes into QBR, which is a personal QB stat. It's not – I don't have a team QBR, so I do have Heineke's QBR in there instead of Carson Wentz, if that helps, if that gives you any solace. No well, problem. what I've really been impressed with lately about this uh, commander's defense – is the fact that they are pretty much stoning everybody. And you saw it against Philadelphia uh, last weekend. And I think we're going to, or I guess that was the Monday night game. And I think we're going to see it again. Uh, You touched on how bad the Texans are. They are a dreadful offense. Uh, All they can say is thank God for Denver, or we'd be number 32, (laughs) uh, putting up just 16.6 points per game. Meanwhile, this commander defense, like I said, has been good. Last five games, giving up just 17 points per contest. And uh, not coincidentally, they're four zero and one against the spread in that stretch. Take the Commanders and lay the uh, two and a half right there. It's up to three now. Yeah. Okay. Fair you got a two and a half anywhere? Uh. Yes. No. No, I didn't. Wait. Maybe okay. I did. I swear. Wait. Hold on. I thought I did find it. Let me. And I swear. Let me take it back. Here you go. One last check. Mm-hmm. I've got minus three. Oh no, it was minus three everywhere. Sorry. But I got you. Two and a half a week, but yep, I'll take. I'll still take it. Yeah, I I don't think it's going to be within three. To be fair, <laughs> I think what's the, the unders forty one. Uh, I think it's going to be forty to zero. I think so. <laughs> okay, fair enough. All uh, right, we'd even take we'd even take thirty the thirty 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 three six or whatever. Yeah, I'd be fine. Yeah, that'd be fine. <laughs> All right, good. All right, on to my third pick of the week. Uh, you've been you touched on already, and I like it. I. I don't know. I, I, my system gave me the over for the Cleveland Buffalo. Obviously, if it, they would have been playing in the snow, I would have nixed this pick. But right. I liked it more when it was at 41 and a half. Obviously, now it's up to 49 and a half now that the movie inside a dome. But listen, this is a Buffalo, this Buffalo offense who's playing very, you know, I still expect them to play very well. I expect they're going to take out their frustrations on somebody and, Unfortunately for the Browns, it might be them. Uh, I like Buffalo to have a bounce back week. Uh, Josh Allen, uh, firmly out of the MVP conversation, right? Now. No, I mean not out of it. Firmly not the you favorite know, anymore. 
taking a back seat. He's still in the car, but he's in the back seat now. Yeah, he's certainly he's certainly in the car still, but yeah, not certainly not in the driver's seat and not even in the front seat. Yeah, absolutely in the back seat, firmly. Maybe even the middle of the back seat, a worse spot to be, you know. But well, the thing about the middle of the back seat is, if the two in the front slam on the brakes, he can always slam right through the windshield, right back into <laughs> into the MVP conversation. What are you gonna say there, Scott? Um. I've got a forced under in this game. I've got under 48. I uh, I wanted the middle of this game. I knew this. I knew the storm was coming in. I got it at 48 on uh, Monday, and knowing it was going to go down, I was just getting ready to pull the trigger. And then they started talking about moving it to Detroit. I'm like, God damn it! But uh, I, you know, I think I think that would have gone down in the 40, 40 and a half, 41 range. That did, uh, yeah. You, you give me you give me you give me an eight point gap for a middle. I don't give us a shit if it's. A, right in the middle of the i did a rod i'm gonna i'm gonna play it so yeah. you just don't you believe think, you just you don't think believe happen in games you know you can still throw the ball yeah. a lot of mishandling a lot of fumbles you know it's just where the fumble is going to come are they going to come in plus territory or minus territory that's fair oh so, yeah i was all set to take a middle shot now i got to root for the under Woo-hoo. are you do you believe in the under or were you just taking the under because you knew the snow was coming and you were worried about I knew it snow was coming i was gonna i was i took the under with the thought the middle at the whole way I'll say I have Cleveland as the second worst defense in the league. And so I like that for my Buffalo, who I have as the third best offense in the league behind the Chiefs and the and the Eagles. Uh, yeah. Buffalo's defense, of course, is uh, the second best defense in the league, according to my system. So you can tell them that. You know, they but they're they're struggling. They're hurting. They're hurt. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt they're hurt right now. Uh and I think that lends well to Cleveland's uh I think they're hurting in places where Cleveland can, I believe, take advantage of it. Uh, certainly enough to hit this 49 and a half over. I just need six touchdowns in a field or seven touchdowns in a field goal. I feel okay about that. Uh, Cleveland obviously allowed enough points against the Miami team. And I'd say the Miami offense is very similar to this bu- Buffalo defense. A bunch of quick hitters can score quickly. Uh, yeah. Give me the over 49 and a half. I don't hate that. Buffalo's missing some key pieces on defense. They're missing Tremaine Edwards. They're missing Tredavious White again. Um, Jordan Poyer is questionable for this one. Micah Hyde, of course, is on IR. So this team can be had if you can give him enough time to throw the ball and if he uh, suddenly turns into somebody besides Jacoby Brissett. But well, that's the uh, only issue. Yeah. Yep. So I do. Uh, I'm I'm rooting for you for you there, my friend. Have you seen just the Poyer's elbow? That's a. He's got that. Yeah. He's got that ball on it, the the fluid there. Oh, mm-hmm. ooh, Ugly. Ugly. good to imagine. Uh, good to imagine. All right. So, uh, speaking of uh, plays that went well for me last week, I'm going to double down. I'm going to fade the Falcons at home again, and I'm going to back the Bears. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> um, neither one of these defenses are good. Uh, Falcons and Challenge have really struggled against the run. They gave up a shit ton of. Uh, um, uh, they give up a shit ton of yards to Carolina in both their games. And the Bears, here they come. They rush for 238 or more yards in five straight, Truman. It's incredible, right? Hey, FedEx ground player of the week every week, right? They're 0 and 5, and those are probably, I think they're 1 and 4, actually, without looking. But has to turn around soon, right? Uh, that's what they tell me. I just, I just think this is a bad matchup. I know that both these offenses are going to do some damage. That's why your total's 50. But I think at the end of the day, the Bears will be left standing. I'll take the Bears uh, plus the three. Yeah, I don't. I don't hate you for that. I just, man, God, good luck betting on either of these teams. Have about five to five versions of them that can show up. You could yep. get a great Falcons team. Could get a terrible Falcons team. You could get good Justin Fields. Get bad Justin Fields. You can get good Justin Fields and bad Justin Fields in the same game. It's crazy. So, oh, and you can get the. Uh... At uh, the uh, the running back, the, uh, the like, Cordell Patterson. Uh, no, no, no. For uh, for Chicago, Dave Montgomery. Other one. Uh, Khalil Herbert's on the IR now. Yeah, he's on the yeah, IR. Yeah, and that's the, that's the thing. He'd been really good, and then he was sucked, and now he's hurt. So you're you're back to uh, you're back to Montgomery. Mm-hmm. See what happens there. Uh, Patterson's been a little underwhelming since he's come back. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, hey, speaking of uh, printing money, we already talked about we talked about it last week, and uh, we go back to the well. Uh, you know, you got to have a nice solid base, a nice firm base. Give me the Las Vegas Denver under forty one and a half. Uh, 
you know, as bad as I feel about the Denver offense, I certainly don't feel great about the Las Vegas offense. Uh, you know, this is a team that has DeAndre Hopkins. Or, sorry, what? No, Devontae Adams. Wow, sorry. Yeah. Wrong D. Wrong D name. Sorry. Wrong tall wide receiver with a D name. Uh, Sherman again, not doing well with the D. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, D- yes, they have Devontae Adams, and they're in the bottom half of the of of offenses in the league in my system. I mean, this is a Devontae Adams, a wide receiver that with with Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers was the MVP candidate with Devontae Adams. Without him, he's no longer an MVP candidate, and he looks and he looks like a bottom ten offense in the league. And you I put. Think- I can see, hear Rogers say, "I see ghosts." Yeah, he looks. Oh, he was horrible. You see him. You see him miss that wide open receiver on third down. There yeah, Christian, late in the game. Christian Watson. Yeah, I did see that. Brutal, just ridiculous. It's just, I don't. He looks. I think. I. I think he's in his head a lot about how bad, uh, you know how bad the receiving core is. Obviously, he's not. He doesn't trust any of his young guys. But I think that's, in a way, still. I don't know, like, it's just snowballing. I don't think he's even looking or thinking they're ever going to be open. I think he's just so negative on them. Which is crazy, because Christian Watson, who was the guy who was open, has scored, was it, five touchdowns in the last four days or whatever? It's yeah. just... Yeah. Uh, I, think just it's, I think it's the ayahuasca. I think it's the ayahuasca hangover for, for Rodgers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What he, he credited that in the offseason for he was going to do a lot better. And uh, it seems like uh, maybe lay off the ayahuasca. There yeah. you go. I'm glad I didn't uh, put all my stock in me getting ayahuasca. I really thought that was going to turn my betting picks around, but I'm really glad I didn't invest in that because it's looking like it's not helping anybody do anything. Mm, not so much. So I'm going to I'm gonna take that same game. I'm going to go with the Broncos. I'm going to take the Broncos minus two and a half. German, Broncos, one and nine. Nine unders, one over. You know what game went over? The, the Raiders game. The Raiders game. That's exactly right. And why? Because this Raiders defense is horrific. They're 28th in the league in scoring defense. They haven't given up. They haven't given up less than 20 points in a game all season long. Uh, Broncos still can't run the football for shit. You know what? Rush showed some signs of maybe cooking a little bit. This Raiders team is awful. They're a lost cause. Their coach is a dead man walking. Although Twitter is to be believed, uh, the Raiders in such tiny financial, uh, tough financial spot. Don't have the money to fire him, right? Yeah, don't have the money to fire him. It's like it's like when you you're married and you hate each other, but you don't have the cash to get divorced. Like, god damn it. <laughs> um, lo- love will find a way, but hate you got to save money for that shit. So yeah. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Broncos uh, laying the points here, laying two and a half against the Raiders. Yeah, gosh, they just got themselves in such a bad situation with Josh McDaniels. I mean, I think we all. I think everybody besides the Broncos saw it coming, but man, they're just in such a terrible spot here. Would you rather be the Broncos right now or the Raiders? Would you rather have a horrible albatross of a quarterback contract around your neck? Or would you rather have a horrible coach around your neck? I think I'd rather be the Raiders. I think it's easier. Well, obviously, apparently it isn't easier to get rid of the of the coach if they don't have the cash in hand to do it. But right. You just signed Russ to a top five quarterback contract in the in the National yeah. Football League, and he yep. hasn't even thrown as many touchdowns as he has bathrooms in his house this season. Nice. Uh, that's a nice. <laughs> there's a guy on TikTok I see that every every week he updates that total, and he says it's funny because he says shockingly Russell Wilson's bathrooms have stayed at the same number of twelve, and Russell Wilson has thrown eight touchdowns this year. It is uh, weak. There- 12 have, man do they have kids him and uh sierra yeah well sierra has kids i'm not sure they've uh, maybe they've had more kids since then sierra had a kid with future which is another me joke that people meme on russ for is that russ okay. is like your goofy dad your goofy stepdad and then future's your cool other dad <laughs> see here's the thing I'm I'm uh, really annoyed by the over bathrooming in houses built in the last twenty years. See, like the four bedroom, six bath. What are we doing? What, what are we What are we doing here, kids? Is there any time? Where are you eating? All twelve of you, assuming there's twelve people live in the house, which I don't think there are. Let's say there's twelve people that live there. What kind of horrific dinner are you exposing your family to 
that you have to have everybody in the john at the same time. All 12 of you. All to, thank God we've got 12 bathrooms or somebody be shitting in the sink. Well, that's the thing uh, is it says 12 bathrooms, but you know that probably means that it's probably like 16 bathrooms. I don't know what that means. It's probably like eight half, bath, half baths. Oh, Where it's like just the toilet and the sink. I think they're adding up the halves and the quarters and they're working their fractions and shit. I bet, I, I bet they are, man. I bet there's Dude, probably 16 different... They're up in a fucking half bath in. <laughs> there could be six different bathroom... <laughs> or 16 different bathroom doors in this house. And Russell Wilson has thrown for seven touchdowns and rushed for one this year. So you're thinking, uh, okay, we got this one roughed in. Did you want to put the full bath in? Russ is like, how much is that? Well, it's going to cost you an extra fifteen hundred. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, okay, I can't. I assume it's a luxurious thing to have just the bathroom and the toilet off of your bet, off of your dining room for when you have guests, or I guess to probably have, I don't know, what I assume is an office style restroom where you have three stalls of toilets for the men and three stalls of toilets for the women on either side, and there's a water fountain in the middle, I assume is what they've got off of their uh, kitchen. I don't don't think that's accurate at all. Well, uh, you know, never say never. Anything could be going on in these rich people houses. I don't know. (laughs) All right, fair enough. Come on, we got to get you to Costco. Let's go. All right, all right, all right, sorry. My final pick, uh, Chiefs, uh, Chargers, I wrote under, but I actually meant over. Uh, 52. 52. 52. Wow, that, is, that, is, that game has exploded. That was 49 and a half on Tuesday. It is a lot. But you I still like care. it. You don't care. You're just going to play the over there. Oh, All actually, right. sorry. I've got it 51 and a half. Sorry, that's my bad. Okay, that's fine. Thank you, thank you. Want to give me reasons or you just want me to do my pick? Uh, offense speak for themselves. Dude, you score a lot. Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, both trending towards playing, both full participants on Friday. Yep. You know, I don't believe any of those, either of those guys are going to be on the field until they're on the field. Uh, Mike Williams owned the Chiefs without Keenan Allen last week. Uh, if you have Mike Williams on your fantasy team, you've been holding on to him this long. This is the game to start him. He kills the Chiefs every week, every t- every year he plays them. Uh, Keenan Allen, I feel like a bit of a Chiefs killer, also. So, oh. get, yeah, I <laughs> and I and I believe this Chiefs offense st- speaks for itself. It'll be interesting to see how they adjust without Juju and without McColl. But oh. the Chiefs are motivated to win this game. If the Chiefs win this game, the division's basically over. They have a th- what a three game lead on them and the tiebreaker against the next closest team. They're they've won the division again. If they win this game, it all comes down to this. I think they're up for the challenge, but I think it's a over. I think we're going to have a scoring fest, a scoring slug fest, uh, similar to uh, last year's late Sunday night game in L.A. Uh, so, yeah, give me the Chiefs. Give me Chiefs Chargers over 51 and a half. Okay. I'm going to take the Chargers here, and I'm, I'll admit it was uh, seven earlier in the week, and I liked them a lot better there, but... Uh... I'll take it at five. This is a, a matchup that, regardless of the records, they traditionally play it close. The last four games, in the Mahomes Herbert area have all gone, uh, been, been one score games. Obviously, Chiefs could still win by seven, be a one score game, not be the number. But uh, I'm going to try and keep up my uh, tradition of absolutely getting every Chiefs game I pick wrong. So I'm going back to the well. I'm going to take the Chargers plus the five points. Um, I'm worried about this receiving core for the Chiefs without um, without uh, Juju and without Nicole Hardman. I'm just not sure they're going to be able to just keep churning it, you know. Um, you're going to see Justin Watson, who's been fine last few weeks. Uh, we'll see what they've got with Tony. You know they've been uh, filling his head with playbook. Uh, non-stop for the last couple weeks. And uh, Scantling, it looks like he's going to be able to go, so that's huge. But I still think at the end of the day, these two teams know each other. They're not going to be a lot of surprises. Uh, the Chiefs aren't going to pull that okie doke shit like they do on other teams with the Chargers. So I uh, I think this one stays close. Wouldn't be surprised to see it go over the total. But I like uh, the Chargers catching five. That's fair. I think absolutely. I, I think that's a tough I, – I think every game is close with these two 
it's been a while since there's been a blown out blowout. I think the last blowout would maybe be when Herbert played the backups, uh, what at the end of his rookie year. So, 2019 was the last game that was uh, cited by more than one score. So was that was that the Herbert? Was that Herbert's uh, rookie? I want to say that was a, like a 32 18 Chiefs win. Uh, 31. It was 31 21. I remember that game. That's what we had to win that one to uh, to advance to get the number one seed. And, oh, uh, with uh, Miami and New England. Also, uh, yeah, that was that, that was that game. That was the uh, at the same day where the Chiefs were down uh, or they'd played kind of a. Uh, shitty first half they were they were just up 10 to 7 mm-hmm. and uh i think they had a, i think they had a turnover maybe a turnover or two in the first half they could they should have should have been blowing them out but uh yeah they put them away in the second half there to win 31 21 so. yeah and uh oh man why am i forgetting his name kevin Cole harman got, no Cole Cole harman got a t- kickoff return for 104 yards damian williams had an 84 yard uh touchdown run right he had a couple of things there that don't usually happen. So, it was yeah, one of those. Was like, it, it was the Damian oh, Williams oh, oh, oh. Uh, getting his average back up because everybody had given him a hard time. Everybody in Kansas City was like, his average is under two per carry. And he All had right. like three weeks in a row where he ran for like 84 yard touchdowns and then continued to, for his, the rest of his carry, average like two yards. But <laughs> so his average ended up being like three and a half for the year or something respectable, is, which is in air quotes. But uh, yeah. And uh and yeah and, and Miami beat New England in the final like minute right. of that game yeah yep with the uh, the touchdown pass from uh, Brian Fitzpatrick it Fitz was, Magic the Fitz Magic where they wanted to have Fitz Magic bang the drum in KC yeah <laughs> yeah not very practical but would have been funny but I'm calling yeah, that... both games yeah absolutely yeah, yeah uh, absolutely well, there well, you go there's a week that's it sounds good sounds great. Get? Okay. I'm going uh five and oh, you too, right? All right, let's do it. I'm ready. Uh can we both go five and oh? Yeah. I think we both go five and oh. Yeah. yeah. We're not we're not fading each other. Nope. Sweet. Scott. All right, buddy. I, I appreciate having you on. I appreciate you being here. Uh where, where can everybody find you? Uh, I'm always over there hanging out at the Winners and Winners YouTube channel doing daily pick videos. And then uh, every Thursday we drop our uh, our variety show, our variety slash handicapping show, Once Upon a Time in Las Vegas. I'll let you finish the rest here in a minute. Um, what is it? The rise of the greatest sports gambling show. You did the same thing you did last Sports week. betting show. God damn it. I, it. God it. damn it. Luke Truman is. Uh, oh, this is my God. I thought Luke about Truman's betting week. right before I said it, too. I really am sorry. We missed the we missed the first week. This is our tenth week. I believe you're one and nine right now on the show name. So oh my god! All right, I'm doing great. Uh, very I'm good. Yeah, you can find me over there. We got a great we got a great uh, version. We have a uh, um, couple things that I wrote. One of the ones was a uh, uh, don't turn into your parents watching the NFL. Oh. Taking off of the progressive commercials, a uh, guy bitching about uh, you have to establish the run before you can pass the ball and. <laughs> Why on earth are they going for it on their on their on the forty yard line? They should be punting things like that. So, uh, we had some fun with that. A lot of interesting stuff. And of course, a pick on every game from uh, four experts, three experts in Rocky, <laughs> three experts in Rocky. Nice. Who's actually? I'll give you a little a little inside baseball. Actually, super knowledgeable at football. Not a better, but knows the game inside and out. So hmm. we always have to uh, we always have to dumb him down. Like the first time we did a. Uh, First time we did a show, he's playing it really dumb, and he talks about something that happened in the NFC Divisional Playoff in 2003. You're like, dude, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't be pulling up shit like that. So, uh, unlike you and I, Truman, we have to dumb him down, where we have to smart us up. Yeah, uh, right. I like, rock. although I kind of like him being like a Rain Man type, <laughs> where, he, where he's the, the, just the yeah, yeah, no idea what's going on, but it's like, but in the 2003 Divisional, I mean, we all remember that. <laughs> you know. yeah, that, that would, oh, that would be funny. 
That, right. that would be excellent. He's like stupid about everything else. Yeah. Oh, well, unfortunately, that ship has sailed. We've already established characters. So sorry, bud. Oh, sorry. Well, fair enough. All right. You're right. Nobody should go on a character arc. Scott, I do appreciate you being here. I appreciate it. Uh, Winnersandwiners.com for uh, go go check out his premium picks. Winners and Winers over on YouTube. Go check out the betting show. Uh, you follow me, twitch.tv slash steam machine, twitter.com slash steam machine, tiktok.com slash steam machine, <gasps> twitter.com slash open disaster, patreon.com slash open disaster. If you're watching this on YouTube, you want to see it a day earlier. We post these on Saturday, even if it's Saturday night. We post these on Saturday. You get them a whole day earlier. You get them plenty of time to bet. But we post these on Sunday. It's like 11 a.m. You're not going to have enough time. You can beat so, those late line moves. You can beat right. those late. You, you could easily pay just one bet where you beat a line move you can pay your five for your five dollars for the whole year exactly exactly well scott i appreciate you being here everybody i appreciate you watching we'll see you guys next week as you hope to head back to the window that very nice like, good luck to everybody thanks for watching of course we'll see everybody hold on i'm stalling because my music player closed stalling i appreciate it see you guys next week oh bye